Guys welcome back to my channel, sorry I haven't been uploading lately but I was busy with school work, however it is now Easter break so I should be able to pump out some new videos starting from today. With that being said let's begin, today I will do what if Deku was one punch man part 4, last time we left of after all might's struggle against all for one, the dark matter thief invasion of earth and swift defeat, ending on Bakugo and Deku's illegal fight and house arrest. After being released from his house arrest, Deku rejoins his class where he is greeted by the big three who explain the work studies, with Deku challenging Myrio to get a to a quick fight to test his improvement over one for all, with Lemillion accepting saying that he was just about to suggest a fight to prove the benefits of experience gained from work studies, however telling Deku that he wants to fight the rest of 1am before fighting Deku. Hearing how close Deku and Lemillion are, class 1A are confused but excited to fight believing that the fight will be easy considering it's a 19 vs 1 fight but they are sorely mistaken as, if Lemillion could beat 1A without 1 for all with ease, he can beat them even faster with it, leaving class 1A exhausted and beaten unable to comprehend Lemillion's strength asking him what his quirk is, with Deku butting in explaining that he has a permeation quirk, and how he uses it, then. Explaining that he had some sort of quirk awakening recently explosively increasing his strength, then mumbling about how fun their fight will be. After Bakugo shut Deku up and Deku apologizing for mumbling, he gets in a fighting stance, telling Lemillion to come at him, and if he can land a solid punch he wins, however Lemillion rejects these terms telling him that he will defeat him powering up to 1 for all 40% feeling the power rush go his body as he darts towards Deku, however Deku sidesteps with ease, flicking the air sending Lemillion flying with him barely activating his permeation before hitting the wall of the gym. Permeating through it and the ground, appearing behind Deku once again throwing a Detroit smash towards Deku, however Deku once again simply dodges and flicks Lemillion away with this repeating for a couple of minutes, when suddenly black tendrils appear from Lemillion's arms going berserk attacking everyone including Lemillion himself, with Deku being forced to block them from hitting his friends, relocating them, then appearing behind Lemillion chopping him in the neck, knocking him out, where... Lemillion sees the same vision of the vestiges as Deku does in canon, learning of the other six quirks which will awaken shortly. Deku then tells his class that he knocked Lemillion out so they can return to class, then taking him to Recovery Girl's office to rest, while he informs All Might of the latest development. After 15 minutes of rest, Lemillion finally wakes up where All Might and Deku question him about Black Whip with Lemillion recounting the dream shocking All Might and Deku, whilst also exciting Deku who wonders if these new quirks can challenge him. After this Deku returns to class telling everyone that Lemillion is fine as they continue the day, wondering where they will go on their work studies. Eventually Deku ends up signing up for a work study with Sir Knight I easily being accepted as this time Knight I would have accepted Deku as All Might's successor considering his existing strength which exceeded All Might and won for all. Due to getting his hero license early, Deku would already be used to going on patrol, with every area he visits, seeing a rapid decrease in crime rate, due to the broadcasts of Deku's previous fights. One day while on patrol, Eri runs into Deku while running away from overhaul, clinging on to Deku, recognizing him as the guy on the news with All Might. Feeling Eri's fear, Deku picks the girl up asking her for her name but she was too petrified to speak barely mumbling save me, hearing this Deku looks up seeing Overhaul emerge from the shadows taking of his gloves getting ready for a fight after recognizing Deku, with Eri holding him tighter. Wanting to be cautious and to avoid a losing fight, Overhaul pretends to Eri's father telling Deku that Eri ran away after being disciplined. Noticing the bandages covering Eri, Deku questions Overhaul on how she got them, with Overhaul telling him that she is very clumsy and falls a lot. Not buying his lie, Deku stands up prepared to fight, however Lemillion covers Deku's face with his hood telling Deku to give Eri back and to go but this time Deku does not listen to him, ripping off Lemillion's cape, appearing behind Overhaul, wrapping his hands in the cape, binding them, then chopping him in the neck, all while still holding Eri and within the blink of the eye. Seeing this, Lemillion calls Sir Knight I informing him of the recent encounter involving Overhaul while Deku tries to tell Eri to calm down and that she will be safe, while they wait for the police to pick up Overhaul. At the police station Eri tells Deku about her living situation, shocking and enraging Deku who leaves the room for a couple minutes, returning with every Shihase Kai member incapacitated in a pile covered in bruises, begging to be arrested, then simply walking away with Eri taking her back with him to UA, giving her to Azawa as he is needed to prevent Eri from accidentally rewinding people. Later on, the police learn of the quirk erasing bullets from overhaul, so return to the main Shihase Kai base, seeing it in rubble completely destroyed from when Deku attacked, however they did not find the quirk destroying bullets because the League of Villains used the commotion to steal them. Meanwhile Gran Torino captures Kurajiri and escapes Gigantomershia. Back at school, Azawa informs the class about the school festival, with 1A deciding to do a band performance to relieve the stress of the UA students following the recent attacks on UA and to make Eri smile. On the day of the festival, Deku encounters gentle criminal in disguise talking about gold tips imperial tea then commenting on how the rundown house next to the shops must be a tea shop which gets gentle criminal's attention, accidentally breaking his cover and attempting to retreat but it is too late as Deku already realized who they are telling them to hand themselves in or to prepare to fight because he is here. Knowing that the person who found them is Deku, La Brava activates her quirk love straight away so Gentle can make a swift mistake putting up an air barrier around Deku while running away, however Deku easily rips through it tying their wrists together with the rope he had just brought, then knocking Gentle out, leaving La Brava conscious, as he couldn't bring himself to hit a weak defenseless child. Seeing the swift take it down, a young man with sharp features, yellow eyes, and long silver hair that spikes upward in two large prongs, giving a feeling of a young wolf, with a lean muscular build. 
wearing a tight, black, long-sleeved shirt, loose-fitting white martial arts pants, a yellow sash around his waist, and Tai Chi slippers on his feet. By the name of Garao, is enraged, remembering his childhood, remembering being bullied and always forced to be the villain, remembering how he always wanted a villain to win as in his eyes. Heroes just beat up weaker people who they deem as being evil and getting praised for it. Whereas absolute evil is unbiased and fair, affecting everyone the same way. Seeing this Garao charges at Deku, sending a full power chop to Deku's shoulder destroying the ground below him but not even harming Deku, who chops Garao's shoulder, breaking his arm and instantly knocking him out Saitama style. Seeing this Deku assumes he is a civilian who thought he was a villain due to how easily he took down Gentle so he decides to take him to a hospital and also drops Gentle and La Brava off at the police station, returning back to UA on time for the festival which was a great success. A couple weeks later the hero billboard chart JP event begins and goes the same as usual however this time Endeavor's speech is slightly different because this time he knows he isn't the strongest so he states that if Deku were a pro hero he would be number one right now so he can't accept the position but because he cannot decline, he has to live up to the position so he asks the world to just watch him, then storming of the stage to go train, surprising everyone in the stadium, with hawks. Being the only one to clap. Later that same day, the high-end no Mew incident happens the same as usual however as soon as Deku hears of the incident, he dashes there in the blink of an eye, deciding to watch and only engage if necessary, realizing that Endeavor needs this to improve his public hero rating, only saving people from the effects of the fight. After the no Mew flaws Endeavor, the crowd begs for Deku to step in but Deku does not, simply pointing at Endeavor saying those flames are still rising up. You see him, right? Endeavor is alive and fighting. So don't give up just cause the other guy's gone. There's still a dude out there risking it all for us. Can't you see? Then shouting you heard that right number one go get M for everyone you can't die here. Shoto is crouched down in the dorms worried so don't die or he will kill you. Hearing this endeavor thanks Deku rocketing through the sky with the no Mew, increasing in the temperature of his flames with every passing second until finally reaching a safe distance at a high altitude, releasing a scorching plus ultra prominent spurn incinerating the hooded high end no Mew, crashing to the ground rising a fist in a victory pose. Okay guys that's the end of the video, thanks for watching, sorry the video was so short despite how long the wait was, please like and subscribe and I hope to see you next time in what if Deku was One Punch Man Part 4.5 Heroes Rising which I hope to be releasing sometime tomorrow. With that being said, this is Demonic Saiyan saying bye.